if we can get in this shot. Dun, 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 dun. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Good. How are you? Well. Good. There we are. Hi. Hello. <laughs> Good morning. Somebody walked up right as you were uh, right as you were going live. Somebody walked right up behind me and was talking to me, and I lost uh, lost track. So sorry. <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. So, sometimes I'm caught preparing when it's actually on live, as opposed to being ready when it's yeah. live. Yeah. And I find this. <laughs> and this is this is another one of our good people. What's up, Newman Machinery? They're coming on as well at some point. Um, so, well, we look forward to that one too. Absolutely. So, you, yours is a little tricky because usually I like to we do questions, and from the questions we get into your story. Now, yeah, b because of the how big it is, we need to first plan how we're going to do this. Right? So, how much time do you have? Can you do two hours or is one, is one all you can give? Uh, uh, say, say that again, I'm sorry. Can, can, you, can you do two hours or is this one all you, all you have time for? We will see. We will okay. see how loud it gets in here. Um, so it. once, uh, sounds like the guys are getting in. For some reason, they're in a little early today. Okay. <laughs> I'm not sure why. Um, yeah. we'll and, we'll and you're going to hear, hear Mills, Mills in the background. So at some point, it may get too loud. But, but we'll, we'll do, um, I, I'd say, I, I plan for an hour. Um, but if we go a little over that, it, it shouldn't be bad. OK, good. All right. So <laughs> I'm going to start with questions. OK. And after the questions, we'll get into how you all got started in this, your family history in this. And, okay. uh, the X's and the O's. All right. All right. So, what word or phrase do you like to hear? Do you most use? What's your most overused word, word or phrase? What phrase do I want to use? What phrase do you most overuse? Oh, that I overuse? Uh, probably, uh, <laughs> it's not really a phrase, but, <laughs> uh, Phrase that I overuse. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I would probably say, uh, or oh my goodness. I say that a lot. So. Okay. What sound do you enjoy hearing most? I enjoy hearing, hi, Grandma. I love you the most. <laughs> what, what sound bothers you the most? Oh, what sound bothers me the most? Uh, people whining. People whining instead of coming up with solutions. The the whine that bothers me. <laughs> All right. If you were to take a trip cross country on the motorcycle, who would it be with? My husband. Does he does he ride? He does. Okay. All right. Cool. <laughs> if you all were invited to, if you were invited to a card game and a fight could possibly break out, who would you take with you? If a fight could break out, could. well, I'm gonna, if, if a fight could, well, I'm gonna say my admin and sister-in-law, Michelle, because uh, she, when, when she watches this, she'll know what I'm talking about. <laughs> it's an inside joke and, and no, it wasn't saying, bad. <laughs> I'm saying, I'm saying, this probably so, she'll know, she'll know. <laughs> okay. What is the one thing your significant other will want to change about you? Well, he, I'm perfect, so obviously nothing. <laughs> he, he would like to change that phrase. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he would like to change. Right. <laughs> or not just the phrase, the, uh, yeah. Um. Okay. Where... What is it about your personality that has positively impacted your business? Probably uh, tenacity. I, when obstacles seem too big to take on, um, and I'm sure you're familiar with this, I am a woman. 
So at first it was very, not, not that you're a woman, but just being, being different in a space that's not typical. That's, yeah. Um, and, and just being, being different, that was an obstacle. It was an obstacle I met and said, I got this. <laughs> so, no. Um, no, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, just, just, just continuing on with uh, what, whatever challenge is put in front of me whenever you're told, no, you can't make a living at urban wood. Urban wood is garbage. Everything that I've been told I can't do, I just figure it out. So tenacity. Okay, so, so you mentioned the part about being a woman. Does, does that give you more pressure, meaning that because there, there's not a lot of you in the industry, that you have to make it work and be an example to show other women that they can do it? I probably, I probably used to feel that way, but probably lost that maybe 15 years ago. Um, that was an obstacle that I did have to overcome, but anymore, as you know, you just, you just finally are so comfortable in what you do. You're like, I got this and I'll take on whomever. So, exactly. so you're right. just like, whatever. Right. So what, what would you say that is what part of your personality that you say is sometimes difficult for your business? Sometimes difficult. I uh, learned from my father <laughs> to, I, I worked with my father and my brothers a lot and we had worked so long together that we didn't need to, uh, we, we knew what each other expected be, uh, before or around the time they were asking for it. And so we would, uh, we, we didn't do a lot of the, we were nice when we were done working, but we're, when we're in the work groove and we're working on a project, hand me that, hand me that, you know, do, do this. And, and we just, it was more factual and we were all okay with that. So I would say one of the things that, that I work on and struggle with is make uh, understanding not everybody, uh, not everybody can handle that. And you need to say, hi, can you please hand me that, you know, or, or whatever you're doing. So just, just uh, bringing that to the table has been something that was a, a challenge for, for me because I don't, I don't need that. I just want to get it done. So. No, you're, you're, you're absolutely right. And, and, I, and when you're managing people and, and sometimes mm -hmm. grown men, um, mm -hmm. some people need handholding. Yeah. And, <laughs> and, and others can, can take, you know, let's get this done and be about the work as opposed to yeah. how you make making me feel. Yeah. Yep. So, <laughs> um, and I need to, I need to have a balance. I need to, I need to listen to the feelings a little more, but I, but we also need to work a little more. So yes, balance, yes. right? It's, it's all part of management. You, you, you have to yeah. manage those, those personalities. Yeah, we've, we've got a good team though. So I, I own, I own it when I, when I mess up and I, and I tell them and they rib me about it. So <laughs> what makes you tick? What makes me tick? Well, I have a uh, passion for uh, three things, essentially, or, or four things. I have a passion for my family. I have a passion for my God. And I have a passion for urban wood and my family business. Okay. So that's what right. makes me tick. That's what gets me going in the morning. <laughs> what irks you the most? What irks me the most? Whining. Remember the sound? <laughs> Whining without a solution. It, it, bring your problems, but let's work on a solution. So, okay. Is there a profession other than your own you would like to try? Profession other than my own? that I, Well, I, um, the one thing I've been wanting to try and am entering is the tech industry. Um, well, actually, I worked in, a in the tech field many years ago. But uh, we're, we're developing an app, actually, but it's very connected to uh, Urban Wood. And it's, it's essentially to uh, inventory the wood and, um, and also we're writing chain of custody standards for Urban Wood or have, have written them. They're about to be published. And tying all of that in so that you're able to track the wood all the way through the process, um, you'll know the backstory, rich, you know, you're, you're getting um, amazing backstories from the, some of the city trees that you're pulling out of New York. We're doing the same thing out here. And so we're going to be providing this app, or this, um, this inventory management app that's going to have the ancestry all the way back to the origin of that tree all the way through. And it's going to be super simple. You can grab your little cell phone and, and tie through it. So 
I wanted to do that, and we're doing it. Okay, so, so wait, wait. So hold, let's let's talk about this. Let's talk about this. All right. All so right. <laughs> this is an app not just for your company, but this is an app not that we can all use. Yes. Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah. So right. Coming right. soon. Yeah. <laughs> we we were testing it. I went down to our uh, developer, uh, and we were sitting in his office a few weeks ago and testing it. Oh my goodness, I am so excited! And we have uh, probably close to a hundred thousand slabs. Uh, I know the backstory. We have all this. We have it all. You know, we have it digitally. It's it's online. But it is not the same where you just click it. We've got these, I have them right here. We were working on it this morning, these cool little QR codes. You know, everything will be categorized, scanned, backstory. You'll know the moisture content if you're selling stuff green versus dry. So super, super cool. Okay, so wait a second, right? We, and we get further into it, but that's fine. That's, that's, that's what the uniqueness about, about your conversation is that they're different parts. Mm -hmm. Okay, so with this app, you're going to sell little stickers that go on each board in the viewer. No, 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 no. You're going to make your own stickers with okay. your own backstory. You're going to put your data into the system. Yep. We will show you what types of printers will work based upon what you're using. You will print out a little QR code with your logo, with your uh, really cool story, and you will be able to, for the first time, track all the way through its history you'll know the ancestry of that tree and with the new certification that's coming out for urban lumber um, that the state of california Cal california department of forestry and fire and the u.s forest service has been assisting with and and helping to fund getting those standards written uh, through the urban wood network uh, which i direct so another hat i wear i should have brought a bunch of hats <laughs> um, uh, those standards um, ha have a process flow uh, for, for chain of custody. And the reason that we did that is uh, my company, Farwas Forest Products, sells a lot of urban wood. Um, live Edge, super popular. But we wanted to start thinking beyond Live Edge. Yep. We, we, and we already do. Um, but we wanted to really get into um, a lot larger builds and be able to collaborate together with other partners. So it's not just far west. We would, you know, West Coast Arborist and, and uh, Truewood Builders and all the different members of the network who were following a, a, a certain process that's legitimate, that says, hey, we're not stealing trees. You know, we're, we're doing these things. We're abiding by the law, following these processes. And here's our chain of custody. Here are the miles this piece of wood traveled. So you're going to know whether it's local wood, you're going to know whether it's, um, you know, if, if that's important to somebody. If it was important to somebody that no land, choose, uh, land use changed, they'll be able to tell that information as well, um, because the chain of custody is going to have all these questions in there, and you're just going to you're just going to fill it out as you go along. It's super easy. Tag it, drop a pin, and and then when uh, when that comes out, when that chain of custody comes out, we will be able now to go to the architects, the designers, the builders, and be able to get our product into some of these lead and USGBC buildings with a high enough qualifying point to make it worth their while to do it. So if we aggregate our inventories together. Um, as urban wood producers, we can start to reach some of these markets, and then we can start to reduce some of our uh, our imports of exotics from overseas, and we'll be able to keep the economy going here, keep local businesses going. It's going to reduce the carbon footprint, just a lot of win-win, and it's going to keep what is currently going into our waste stream out of the waste stream and turn it into the asset it should have been. Yeah, and what that does is that increases the value and the demand for what we do it does it does a a across the board and and so that's my urban wood network hat um and then and then the urban lumber uh uh the uln and ancestry is the app that's going to make it easy because that way you're not having to collect all this data and remember all this data that's going to be too much but if you have an app to do it easily you're, you're already tracking it manually anyways, you'll be able to increase your production, increase your sales, all of the inventory that you have in New York, that I have out here across the nation, everybody who subscribes to this app and has their inventory in it, if they want to, um, because you'll be able to push it up to your own website uh, through an e-commerce solution. Um, and, and then when it, when it sells, it'll just deduct from there. But you'll also have the opportunity 
to push it up to the main website for Ancestry to be able to uh, have all of your inventory aggregated. So these architects and designers that we're pitching to, which we have state money to pitch to them to bring together everybody, to bring awareness to Urban Wood on a national scale. So, um, so you would they take- They would be able to aggregate and pull your inventory in and see, oh, Robert's got this out there in New York. I'm gonna buy that. That's within 20 miles of me, perfect. Yeah, that's what I was gonna ask. So if, if, yep. there's, if there's 200 people from all over the country, uh -huh. you can bring them all to one place where people can check for a particular thing they're looking for. Yes, yes. If somebody's looking for urban wood that um, was from, you know, that had a certain backstory or certain, you know, met certain criteria um, and they're looking for, um, what, what would we all, uh, I'm, I'm trying to think of a wood that you would have out here that we would have, but let, oh, let's say, uh, ash? well, we have California white oak. You have, yeah, ash. There you go, ash. Um, you know, they're looking for a large order of ash. They want to do um, some some big project, and it just has to be ash. The, and and say they have, say it's a Starbucks, um, and Starbucks is all around the nation. So Starbucks wants to buy local, but they also want to use urban wood, but they also want, um, they want it to be all the same species, potentially, or, or at least in a same grouping of species. And they want to do the flooring in all these Starbucks. And this is, kind of ties into a somewhat true story. Um, it was actually for Pete's, but <laughs> um, uh, they, they would be able to um, go, oh, okay, all of these, all of these producers are producing this. They would be able to go to this, to this website, they would see where where all of the different producers have exactly what they're looking for. So they're keeping their buy local. They're keeping their, um, they're keeping all the things that make them tick, that, that uh, apply to their conscience and, and apply to how they want to do business. So super cool, exciting things coming for Urban Wood. Okay, so how would a person qualify to be a vendor or a member of the network? So the Urban Wood Network, you can be a member of now. That's a network that networks together urban wood professionals that exists now and you can apply. In the other one, we're still okay, working well, does, out the- Is there a website for that? Uh, yeah, uh, urbansalvagewoods.com for the West Coast. And for you, it would be urbanwoodnetwork.org. Um, so urbanwoodnetwork.org is, is the national level. And then there's a Western region, which is urbansalvagewoods.com and urban or urbanwoodnetworkwest.org as well. So, okay. so yeah. Now that's not going to have any information about the app or the aggreg aggregated inventories on it. That is not, uh, that's not public yet. Because yeah, just for us app to become a part of the network. Yeah. So when it does come out, we're, we're already mm -hmm. there. So when it does come out, you're already on the mailing list. You're already hit up uh, the chain of custody, the, the USRW certified wood standards and chain of custody for urban wood. You'll already be uh, eligible to participate in that because you are an urban wood network member. Yes. Okay. And, and you need to see, we need to have yes. this conversation. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Little reminder. <laughs> All right. So, okay. So how, how do you, how, what are the qualifications for becoming a member? Uh, qualifications uh, for becoming a member are on are on the website. Okay. Um, some of them are, and now I know that a lot of users use traditional, or a lot of urban wood producers who identify as urban wood producers do still use some traditional uh, timber or, or wood. That's okay. You don't have to swear that off forever. You just need to keep your wood offering separate. Um, and of course, there's the code of conduct, the, you know, the do business ethically and those types of things. Um, uh, one, of the, one of the reasons that we started the network and I, 20 years ago, working with, um, working with Sam Sherrill, working with Cal Fire, working with all of the uh, uh, big supporters of Urban Wood uh, nationwide with Dovetail um, out of the Midwest. And working with them, we began to realize that there's a there's a big disconnect in in um, 
people getting into the urban wood space. Uh, and there's, there's some problems with it with people, oh, you know, oh, I can buy a chainsaw and I can buy a little, you know, a little chainsaw mill and I can go out and I can start working and I'm going to sell, you know, they're getting this for their walnut slabs and they just start selling walnut slabs to people, calling it urban wood. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. But they forgot about the part about it being dry. Just because the log's been down for three years does not mean you can make your table now, you know, as the wood dried once it's been slabbed out. So that whole story. Just like moisture content, some of those standards are some of the things that you'll see in there, you know, as far as, um, as far as just educating to, hey, let's, let's do business ethically. We're going to declare our, it's okay to sell green wood. You just need to declare it and disclose it. You know, they need to know what they're buying, not that, oh, let's, let's install our new cabinets tomorrow. You know, right. it doesn't and, work that way. And as you say that, the, the, some of the guys you're talking about, they don't even know it's green. No. What do you mean they need to drive? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, they, someone told them they can make money off of it, they cut it, and they're selling it. That's yeah. all they know. Yeah. Yeah, so, so there, there's a process. So it's education and it, it's it's basically saying, hey, these people know what they're, you know, these people know what they're doing. These people have been educated. They they have this brand, the UWN or Urban Wood Network brand behind them that says, you know, we're, we're set apart. We didn't just start this yesterday, uh, you know, and, and not that we have a problem with startups, but but they have been educated and they, they're, they're following a set, of, a set of ethics. And the reason that we did that is we were starting to, um, some of those people who had bought those, uh, those island tops or those cabinets or different things for their product, they come back a few years later um, to these people and, they, and we, you know, we would be trying to sell them uh, something in the future and they'd say, oh, we're gonna stay away from urban wood because I bought that one time from Joe down the street and it fell apart and cracked and twisted and curled. So urban wood started getting kind of a bad name and we wanna change that because there's a lot of legitimate businesses like yours and mine out there who have higher standards and who are following the right processes because we aren't, we aren't in it for you know, the next 12 months, we're in it because this is our this life. Is what, yeah, this is what we do. What we do, this is, yeah, this is who we are. And, and so we want that, because we have that longevity and because we're good people, we want to make sure that we're putting out a good product and, and that it's, it's something we can stand behind and not just for 12 months until it moves on us. So. Right. I, I often get, being in the market that I'm in, I get a lot of calls. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's in the beginning of projects where they have not determined what materials will be used for what. And I ask, I'm like, well, what are you doing for floors? Is there one? Mm -hmm. like, I'm trying to upsell. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And, and it's an old, uh, it's 5,000 square foot, but we're getting the flooring from X. Mm -hmm. And mind you, for me to produce 5,000 square foot of flooring, it's going gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna to take a while. It's, it's, it's not yeah. in my, my, my business plan yet. Mm -hmm. And with something like this, that could be a part of my business plan and I prepare for it. And with things being marked and certified and traceable, it makes it a lot easier for me to do. Yes. And, and, and for others like me. Yeah. And, and at the, the, you know, and some, pe some people are kind of afraid of, you know, networking with other people because they're afraid that's going to steal from their business. But if, if we do what we think we're going to be able to do with this, uh, we are going to be able to raise the bar for all of the small everybody. producers, everybody, everybody. And state of California, uh, through Prop 68 funds this year, awarded the Urban Wood Network West, which I'm the director of, um, and we will be partnering with my for-profit company, Far West Forest Products, and, and a handful of others in the area to start an, a USRW certified urban wood store. Um, so they gave us almost a million dollars to start that project. Wow. Uh, to and, and so it won't just be our product. It will be all of the members of the Urban Wood Network who are certifying their product will be able to sell it through this store and just really, uh, and then also another grant to market it. And as we market the concept of urban wood, we're, we're going to be able to make it a go-to product for everybody across the nation. It's just, it's going to be a really big deal for small business. 
Yeah, let me let me give you my my what you're saying about the state of California and them mm -hmm. donating money to to push this further. Mm -hmm. Let me give you the the other end of that in New York. Okay. When Hurricane Sandy hit, you know there was a ton of trees that came down. Right. And they brought them to Floyd Bennett Field, which is where mm -hmm. the the um, fighter jets landed way back in the day. And it's just a blank yeah. field now. People use it for whatever. But there was so much wood there. Mm -hmm. And the state of New York, Army Corps of Engineers got this and they sent out advertisements for people to come and take this wood and they would pay you um, per yard to get it out. Oh, wow. Now, okay. the catch was you couldn't take any host species of bugs. The sugar tree. You couldn't take what? You, you, you could not take any host species of bugs. Elm, okay. yeah. maple, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. ash. They were cetera. quarantined. Yeah. Yep. All yeah. All of that stuff you could not take. Mm -hmm. Hickory, walnut, cherry, uh, the oats, you can take. Nice. But they had the Department of Ag. Mm -hmm. On the Corps of Engineers, um, <laughs> the Department of Agriculture, the Parks Department, there were five yeah. or six different government entities circling this pile of wood 24 hours a day because they did not want the bugs. They didn't, they didn't want anyone stealing the wood or taking the wood. They didn't want the Got bugs it. to travel. Right. They, they were... They were Containing the bugs. Yeah, yeah. And and I was talking to someone. Um, maybe, maybe it was Roger from some Roger from Rico. Someone were talking about because I got there. I actually figured out how to get there with them and mill and cut mm -hmm. some wood. But yeah. they could have had two or three people come mill all of that stuff, dry it, and still kill the bugs. Sterilize it. Yeah. And, and and put that into to the building in New York City. Yeah. And, yeah. and, I, and I can guarantee you, it probably cost the same amount of money it did for them to invest in you. Yeah, it's true. That's so, true. So the potential is there and the money is there. We just need to get it in the it's right It's about direction. education. It's about education and making sure that there's a precedent that, oh, you know, when that happened here, this is what they did and they were able to rescue it and here were the dollars saved and here was the carbon saved and, you know, all of those types of things. And so when we're able to do that, um, uh, have those past precedences, I think that'll prevent those scenarios in the future so that more of that wood is able to be utilized. Some, there, there's a guy here, Trillips. They, 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 do, they do reclaim wood. They do a pretty decent amount. And he came out, y'all, and he was talking to me. And he goes, I'll let you know, but to be honest with you, uh, we go to Baltimore. And at this time, I'm like, we go to Baltimore for? Baltimore City has a yard. I've been there. <laughs> I have been there. <laughs> I, I toured that last year. Yeah. Yeah. So, so they, they, they kind of jumped on the ball. They, they're yeah. out of the game. They uh, are. They are. And we, and we work with them. I was actually on a call with uh, some of their team last week working on uh, getting some other things streamlined across the nation so that uh, so that more cities can be like Baltimore with that flagship. And they're, they're doing some really cool stuff with recidivism where they're taking people straight out of prison who have had cyclical, um, you know, just, just crime and, and welfare. And they're teaching them a better way. They're getting them out of that. They're breaking the cycle. And, and uh, some of these uh, men came up to us and they're like, my daughter is going to college. I'm paying her way to college because of this program. Baltimore's doing some really cool things. Oh, beautiful. And, and to, to refer to what you were saying about the competition. Yeah. There is so much construction. There's so much that's being built. There is. They're not using you. They're not using me. They're not using anyone we know. A lot of the big stuff, you were correct. So the competition is really a non-issue because once we get the green light, we get to be, some of these jobs may be even too big for us to handle, but we get the opportunity yeah. 
to, to go right. in these places where we other kind of otherwise wouldn't. And that's where right. working together becomes a lot more important than worrying about whether or not you have competition. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Preach it. <laughs> All right, so so we, we kind of um, went off the beaten path. We, we're still on yes, the question. Yes, we did. Yes, we so, did. Far west. <laughs> <laughs> that's where we went. You asked about my passion. I have a lot of them. <laughs> All right, so um, the last question is, what would you want on your tombstone? What would I want on my tombstone? Um, boy, I don't know. <laughs> uh, loved by her family. She loved her family. She loved her God, and she served others well. Okay, all right, cool. Now we can get into your journey. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so, what we like to start from is is how your family for nine generations you said got into this and how it came to you well uh so so nine generations in in the timber industry um i came from a long line of traditional loggers that's you know a, a logging family uh that's typically what um uh what you know, a lot of people of that generate of past generations did for a living. And my dad was a, a timber faller. I uh, grew up, um, you know, go, going to work with him. But uh, off season, he would, uh, I remember as a, as a small kid, um, he would be driving down, you know, driving down a, a road and he'd look over and he'd see a a walnut tree that was dead and dying and they're still trying to, you know, uh, still trying to nurse it to back to health and it's about to fall on this, you know, these people's house. And so he'd go up and he'd say, you know what, you might want to have that checked out. Um, and, and he would offer to buy the, the tree from them, uh, you know, or, or this one is coming out or, or he'd see somebody removing a tree for whatever reason in a, in a city street or in, you know, in an urban environment. And he'd say, wait, don't cut that up. I'll take that. And so he just started collecting logs, um, you know, a little different from, from traditional, uh, from his traditional logging and, and timber background, but he started to do that. And he started to be a, a burl and a high end, uh, 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 hardwood buyer. Um, and they would ship the wood over to Italy and it would be uh, turned and shipped back to us. And so he started to do that. And then we. Whoa, um, one second. One second. What, what do you mean turned and shipped back to you? Uh, churned uh, on, on, a, on a lathe veneer. Veneer. Yeah. Veneer. Uh, gun stocks. He, he, he bought and sold a lot of gun stocks. And he's around here. We'll, we'll go meet him. He's. Uh, Would love uh, yeah. Yeah. So. Um, so that was. Uh, uh, what, what we did, that was my childhood. That's how I grew up always around wood. And then, uh, you know, we did packaged firewood so that nothing went to waste, you know, and, and so we had a big packaged firewood business. We supplied longs and lumberjack and, and probably uh, there might not be national stores. I don't know, but, <laughs> but we, we, you know, all of these different stores and, and a lot of local grocery stores, uh, Albertsons, we would supply them with packaged firewood and, uh, you know, in those little cellophane, cellophane bundles. And then, you know, as, as we're getting more and more logs in, you know, and he's still doing the, you know, the high-end burls and stuff, we're starting to go, man, we are wasting so much of this wood. What are we doing? And um, he had an old Foley bell saw uh, still here somewhere out back, but internet won't reach back there, so you won't be able to go see it. Um, but he... Uh, uh, Eventually, in, in the 90s, he wanted one in the 80s when they first came out, but in the 90s, he eventually uh, bought a wood miser. And we're like, ah, yeah, this is, you know, this is going to be good for the business, but, you know, is, is it too much money? Is it this? Is it that? You know? And so, um, and for those of you who don't know my story, we are now the representative for wood miser for all of the West Coast. So best decision we ever made, which we found out very, very quickly. Mill paid for itself in no time. Let's talk um, about that. Yeah. Okay. The, sure. The, the wood miser life. Um, how you got into it? When did you? When did? When you? Okay, you first purchased the mill for yourself. We purchased the mill for Far West, yeah, because we were tired of sending all these beautiful logs into firewood or selling them to, you know, we would sell them to 
other other mills because you know uh, knowing the industry we were able to segregate the logs by you know this is a this is a, a saw log versus a firewood log and so we were doing that and then milling some of our own with you know with the old saw but in but in the 90s we were able to uh switch gears and get into more of a production range by buying an lt40 wood miser with a lombardini diesel so <laughs> All right, so yeah, how long using how long were you using that saw before you actually got into or became a dealer? Um, well, in two thousand, Woodmeister contacted us and said, "Hey, we've got a weird preposition for you," and we're like, "Okay, well, we're weird, so perfect." <laughs> we're we're not you know we're total outside the box thinkers, and so they said, you know, instead of having salesmen that are just salesmen. Uh, that that just you know sit behind a desk and this is all they do all day they considered um, because they were looking at opening something in California and we had purchased from the branch up in Portland Oregon which is still there um, but they decided they asked us if we would be interested in partnering with them to open a location uh, where where we sold the product from here and um, we're like yeah we'll test it out for a year we'll see how it goes and that was in 2000 20 years later, here we are. Wow. So, and now we handle all of California, Nevada. Um, we have sales meetings in Indiana. They, they'll, uh, we, we frequently travel to do other things. I help a lot with the, with the Oregon branch and, and do a lot of the shows in Oregon. And um, sometimes I've gone to Georgia for the IWF to help with that. Um, so that, that it's definitely branched out. It's a little bigger than, you know, let's try this little thing for a year. So. Right. What I'm trying to figure out how to how to how to ask the question correctly. How how many saws do you move a year? Um, I'm not sure. We're we're. I'll I'll just say we get a uh, some months we get four to five loads, semi load containers full of sawmills in a month. Right now, we have everything sold. Like, I think we've got, well, we got one on Friday and I think one on Monday this week. So, uh, and then one, the, yeah, so we've had three loads this, this uh, month already. Everything on it sold. Everything on it sold. So, doing, doing, quarant doing, doing COVID quarantine, you were busy. We were busy, busy, busy. I uh, yeah, uh, break, uh, breaking records. <laughs> so yeah, everybody, you know, everybody's home. Blade sales are are through the roof because those of uh, those who already have saws, they're not, you know, that are doing it as a hobby, as a side job. Well, they can't go to the regular job, but they can mill because that's uh, total isolation activity. So. Right, catch up on some logs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Okay, so. How many siblings and who's in the business? Um, so there were four of us. Um, there's my older brother, Cody, um, who was in the business. We, we lost him last year. So um, Sorry to hear that. He, he's, still, he's still in the business. <laughs> um, and, uh, and his wife is, is um, still now owns a part of the business. Um, my younger brother, Jason, is a part of the business and my dad and my two kids work here now and my grandson <laughs> so how old is so, he uh, 15. all right he's he's uh six foot something so <laughs> okay. yeah wow um Let's see if we have any questions. And, and I have one other sibling, my sister Michelle, but she does not work here. She she runs a cattle ranch. A cattle ranch. Cattle ranch, yeah. All right, cool. What is the most gratifying thing about what you do? The most gratifying what? Thing about what you do. I like helping people. I I that uh, to to see a customer go home with a product that that really, uh, that just made them happy. You know, they're, they're so excited about it. That's very gratifying. Um, happy customers is, is very gratifying. And being able to work with my family is also very gratifying. So um, a, a lot of what I do is gratifying. So I could go on for days. <laughs> All right, good. Where, 
where do you think you need to improve or change what you all, what you all do? Well, one of the things we need to improve is our inventory management system, which the app is going to solve. Um, and we need more warehouse space. So we're actually um, uh, working uh, with two different properties, looking at looking at some options for getting into the warehouse space um, and to get a larger store. And once we do that, we will be able to bring in other other product from uh, from our competitors, but we call them partners, um, oh, nice. and, and be able to move more of this product. And so space, that that's, um, I, I wouldn't say it's what we're doing wrong, but it's, it's our next big thing yes. to do. Um, yeah. Growth is continuous. Okay, yep. um, still in grain. And then we can uh -huh. have every, a place for everything and everything in its place. <laughs> yes, that, that's, that, that requires a lot of space. Yeah. Um, I haven't been following Far West for long. Do you do slabs? And dimensional? Uh, yes, we do slabs, dimensional. We, we try to run a zero waste facility where we use everything from turning blocks all the way down to pin blanks um, uh, for, you know, to, to make pins out of for the, for the turners and, and are able to tell that backstory on every single piece of, of the thousands and thousands of pieces that, that move through here. So. Okay. And do you see the market shifting one way or another? I see the market, um, uh, I, I don't see the market in our area or in our line of work moving away from Live Edge. Live Edge is hot, hot, hot still. It's been hot for longer than we thought it would last. But we also sell, um, like for instance, uh, Patagonia uh, has a, a business model that says that they don't want to use anything that wasn't urban salvaged or reclaimed in their new builds. So their new building down in Santa Barbara, we did all the timber frame for that, and they put in a timber frame building. So we do a lot of that. Uh, we do, um, you know, even the low-grade logs, which later we'll be able to walk out and look at some of those, those can go into dunnage. Um, so, so Live Edge is one of our staples. It used to be our staple, but now we're doing a lot more dimensional. Um, we don't do the actual flooring, but we, do, but we end up being the starting point for a lot of flooring that goes out to be engineered. So, so yeah, we do a lot of different things. All right, so for the, the flooring part, so you have logs, you uh, break them down and someone else will mill them in the flooring. Uh, we, we, we mill them down and then we send, uh, so some people just nail them down like that because that's actually kind of popular right now. Um, we have a molder planer. We could do a small batch, but we don't do it for others. Um, so we could do a small batch of, of flooring here, you know, if it was solid wood, but uh, a company that, um, that uh, also does urban wood near us, Westgate Hardwoods, they, um, uh, we milled a bunch of California black oak that we had salvaged, that my dad and brothers had salvaged, and uh, uh, we were able to take it up to them, and they were able to run it, uh, and that's the flooring in my parents' home. They did their counters, their cabinetry, all of that, because we don't, we're not woodworkers. We can do it, it's not our specialty. It's not where it's not where we shine, um, and so we usually pass it off to somebody else. Okay. Where, if you can remember, would you say was the most meaningful place that you've taken timber out of? I would say the most meaningful place, just because of the history of it, is, um, and as, as you know, nobody would fall old growth giant sequoia redwoods today. Um, but uh, three trees fell in a storm in around 2008, and we were able to go in in 2011, uh, my dad and my brother, and they were able to salvage those trees out. And it was such a, such a cool story. These trees are thousands of years old. So the history that is in them is phenomenal. And uh, our, our family had the honor to go in and salvage those out. And Animal Planets, the Redwood Kings, thought it was so fascinating that they actually filmed it. And so if you watch uh, the Redwood Kings, uh, you'll get to see my, uh, the opening episode of all of them is my dad on the, on the dozer, which we might get to see today. Um, and, uh, um, uh, and then in every episode, there was one member of our family doing something in it. And I, I even delivered the wood miser and trained them on that. So a lot of, a lot of fun stuff on, on that. So that's the most memorable. How do you get that call? 
Uh, we are well known in the industry for doing things that everybody says cannot be done. So, mm -hmm. so that's what we do. We do what can't be done. Um, we did not have the right equipment. Um, we did not have the money. To move something that okay. big requires a, a lot. Uh, you, you, would, you would be surprised if it's, if it's within uh, internet shot, I'll show you the little loader that did most of the work. So the loader, the skitter and the, and the dozer, um, not big enough, not big enough to move it, not big enough to lift it. But my dad is a genius at leverage. <laughs> and, and so he made it happen with equipment that could not, that it just couldn't work with. So, uh, then, then at the end, I mean, we had to pay a hundred thousand dollars for the wood and we didn't have a hundred thousand dollars. So we were, um, un unfortunately had to, uh, what? had to sell a couple containers to China to, to pay for it. So what, why did you have to pay for the wood? Uh, because it's old growth giant sequoia redwood that is thousands of years old. Okay, Those so three trees had 100,000 board feet in them. And, and so we had to pay $100,000 plus the cost of getting it out. So, and you purchased the wood from the state of California? Uh, no, no, this was not, this was, this was a different, um, th this was, the state of California was involved, but it was not through the state. State of California is involved at any time timber is moved, sold, or, or transported. Yeah, I guess what I'm trying to figure out, like if stuff comes down, who's selling? Mm -hmm. uh, the landowner. Mm -hmm. Easy enough. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay, so how did you get partners in China to buy I didn't, uh, uh We didn't know it was going to China or we might have balked. Um, <laughs> uh, I don't know. I, I just, I felt like it, it should stay here. It should stay local. It's part of our history, but oh. it, it is what it is. But I mean, we had to pay for it. We actually sold it to a, a broker here in California and later found out it was going to China yeah. because we had to do our, our APHIS, our certifications and, and get a, uh, get all of the uh, sterilization certifications for it. So. Yeah. I, I think sometimes as much as we like to, to keep it pure, Sometimes that, that doesn't always work because sometimes we gotta eat. Yeah, <laughs> li literally, yeah. literally. Yeah, yeah, and that's quite and that's, literally. Yeah. Right, that's that's what you have to do to make it work, and and right. for the greater good, more people were able to to access it as opposed to it just rotting in the forest. Yeah, yeah, and and so it was it was enough to go ahead and pay for it, and um, uh, so we were able to pay for the. Uh, uh, pay, pay for the job, and then you know, it, and it took a while for it to become profitable. Um, that job bought us our first WM1000 sawmill, which paid for itself in less than 30 days from that job. So, wow! Do you, so it do came you, back. It just—it <laughs> it was a gamble. It was a risk. I'm like this is yeah. gonna, this is gonna and, uh, possibly do us in, but it didn't. So. Yeah, and, 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 and as the saying goes, scared money don't make money. Right. <laughs> so, do you still have any of that, any of those trees, any of that wood? Yes. Yes, and I will, I will show you. We we have the butt log of the third tree, which was, I believe, the smallest, uh, by far the smallest tree. Um, it, it's standing up out front, and it was stood up with a loader that can't lift it. So, <laughs> which I have a video on there showing how my dad made it work, even though it didn't work. So it's, it's kind of cool. If you go on our Instagram page, you'll find it. All right, cool. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. We have nine minutes okay. before Instagram cuts us off and starts us again. So, okay. so for the sake of time, oh, I'm sorry. How do you manage your time and how do you create healthy boundaries, especially when working with family? <laughs> you can go. <laughs> you can answer that. Wait a we, we just tell it how it is. Sometimes sometimes we uh, yell at each other, but at the end of the day, we know we love each other, so we make it work. <laughs> yeah, you, you'll get to meet my daughter. My son's probably here. My dad's here. So yeah, we will, um, uh, they'll, they'll say because I'm bossy. So <laughs> somebody has but to. Somebody has to, yeah, somebody has to organize it. Uh, time management is, um, 
That's, that's a tough one. I, I work probably more than I should to make sure that it all comes together, but that's because I keep having these other side passions, the Urban Wood Network, you know, the nonprofit that I direct, and then I'm on a steering committee um, uh, for the National Urban Wood Network, and, uh, and now the app, and, and uh, now we're on a task force with SFI to determine if, we, if they're going to move into the urban forestry space. And so a lot of different hats that we're juggling. So time management is a tough one. Um, I need to add more staff and I need to take some of what's in here and put it over. So my daughter just got back from maternity leave and I'm very thankful because I've been able to transfer a lot of this to her uh, over the years. And so now, uh, w now that she's back, I'm like, oh, I can breathe, <laughs> you know, because <laughs> there's some stuff that she just gets, you know, you live it long enough, you know, she's, she's been out here working with me since she was, you know, that she could walk, so. <laughs> right. So this this guy is talking to me. He goes, my question is, why does it have to be black lumberjack? Why can't it be lumberjack? Uh, black and white couldn't even make a difference anymore. Well, if you, I think, follow one of my um, posts on Instagram, it says how uh, black lumberjack was born. And if you can find two other black lumberjacks, I'll change the name. How about that? Done. It's a great, I think it's a great marketing thing. It, that's what, that's what makes you stand out. Use exactly. it. Use it. And, <laughs> as long as you're not condemning white lumberjacks, it's all good. <laughs> What's the, that's the thing is lumberjack is white. I mean, if you said white lumberjack, you're talking about every other lumberjack that there is. And the whole point for me. There's a picture in my office of a black lumberjack. From nine, I think it's from 1920. I don't know him. It's just this big picture. <laughs> it's like from exactly. 1920. It's super cool. It, it used to be a trade that that was not. Uh, it was just whomever. It it just is what it it was what it was. If if you were in timber, it didn't matter what color you were. You were a lumberjack. So if you're in timber country, yep. so yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, we, we're not gonna get into that. <laughs> no, it's a good it's a good marketing strategy. Yeah. So <laughs> it works. It's, it's, it, it works. works. It works. Work. You stand out. Yep. yep. So use what you got. <laughs> absolutely. So we, we're going to hop off. We're going to get back on, okay. and we're going to go outside. All right. Sounds All good. Right. All right. So All if right. you want to join us back, we're going to do the tour. All right. So here we are. All right. All right. Man, me, what's up? Hello again. Hello again. Hi. So are you ready to walk around? Let's do the darn thing. All right. All right. Let me, uh, uh, yeah, I'm going to lose service in a lot of places, but I'll, I'll go where I can. <laughs> okay. My daughter got her bossiness from her mother. It must have been from her father. Couldn't have been from her mother. <laughs> so this is, uh, this is far west. Here are some wood slabs. So we do a lot of live edge. I think somebody had asked about that. Uh, the urban wood network yep. that I was talking to you about, one of the things that we do is we have all of these finished pieces that actually uh, Knothead, Charles the Greek with Knothead finished most of these for us. And we take these around because these are all really unique woods that almost always end up in the landfill. And so these, uh, rescued from the landfill. We've got red willow. This one doesn't end up in the landfill, but that's giant sequoia. That's giant sequoia. Boy, the camera's not picking up that color very well. This is tan oak. That gets chipped a lot. We've got uh, blue pine, uh, which is ponderosa pine. It's just blue stained. Used to go to the landfill, get chipped, get burned had no value. That's from our drought in, in California, uh, caused the bark beetle to come in and really uh, start to destroy a lot of our, uh, a lot of our palm trees. Oh. Working with us on a big campaign to find a home for all of those trees. So, because they're dead, they've got to come out, they're a fire hazard. Part of, part of, why, uh, part of why California's on fire all the time. This is another piece of that uh, giant sequoia. While we're here, let's walk in the wood miser. Turn the light on. This is the wood miser parts room. 
all those parts, cant hooks, all the different parts that you need for your mill are in this warehouse. So we have a lot of different things. We'll get back to the wood. I just wanted to no, kind of show people always. This is a this is a part of what you do. So you're allowed to show that. It's, yep. Your wood miser. Yep. So so Belt, get a wood miser. We've got your parts. We will take care of you. We've got uh, Alex, our, our technician, our mechanic. He's out delivering a mill and working on a mill this week. So you won't get to meet him, but we do have an on-site uh, technician for service, which is amazing because that's one of the benefits of Woodmiser is no matter where you buy, there's almost always a technician in your area. So enough of the parts room, back to the wood. So kind of walk here. You able to hear me okay with the noise? Yeah. Turn the generator. I can turn the generator off if we need to. They've got a, or not the generator, the air compressor out there, I think. So, oh, this is kind of cool. This is kind of a, uh, kind of our little museum of all my dad's old and my grandpa's and, and I think even some of his grandpa's before him uh, uh, equipment that they actually used to use. Hi Nathan, so there's ninth generation right there, and he likes to look like granddaddy, so. <laughs> um, Dad, you'll, you'll, uh, so, here is, there's my daughter, that's Alyssa, so here's more of our museum, um, a lot of people get a kick out of that. You don't see those very often. I don't have the 090 steels that he did that job on up here. I think they're in a they're in a different warehouse. We're not going to be able to go up that far. Um, you can come out. Um, here is our office. Up here is a Mac that my brother restored for my dad. My dad bought that saw in 1976, the year my younger brother Jason was born and Jason restored it for him. My dad's old hard hat. There's Grant, my grandpa's uh, moonshine. <laughs> so <laughs> he's, he's now gone, but we kept, his, we kept his water jug. We called it his moonshine jug because we all, we all wondered. No. <laughs> Can, I have a question uh, for you. How, sure. How many square foot of wood storage do you have? Hi, Michelle. What's up, Michelle? Um, how many square foot? I'm, I'm not sure how many square foot. Um, this building here is about 5,000 square foot. Um, we have another facility out there that's not completely, uh, completely finished yet. There's wood out there. We have five acres of wood out back um, that is drying, and we just have it covered with... Um, we have it covered with slash. We have it covered with, um, there's our ram that's carved out of that giant sequoia. Uh, and we have it covered with cardboard and shade screen. So five acres of milled lumber. So there's some more wood. Here is part of the Urban Wood Network's life cycle of an urban tree. It kind of walks through the steps. We take that to the California State Fair. And, uh, and all the other fairs, but we take it to the California State Fair specifically, there's our antique scale, um, because uh, that, that way we're able to educate the public. Hey, when you have a tree in your neighborhood, when you have a tree at your library, at any of the state buildings, talk to whomever owns them, whether it's yourself or whoever else, and make sure they get repurposed. Don't let them just go to the landfill. Uh, find a way to utilize them. And so we do, we've been doing this education campaign there um, since before we even opened uh, or started the formal Urban Wood Network because we were informally networking. So this is a, a cedar slab that just goes to the waste and fills off. Um, some California walnut. Uh, it's got the graft line on it. Black walnut and English walnut mix. Lots of different slabs. Um, 
How far back does Black Walnut and Enos Walnut go? I'm sorry? How far back does Black Walnut, the mixing of the two trees, and Enos Walnut go? Walnut. Our, our walnut out here is Claro Walnut, California Claro. Um, and so the English walnut came in, and I'm not sure what year it came in, but English walnut came over here. And um, uh, so the, the orchard trees, they'll use the California Claro rootstock out here. All the, all the orchards out in our area have the California Claro rootstock because it does better in the soil here because it's indigenous. And then they'll graft on the English because it uh, is a more lucrative nut for them. And so that's uh, that's part of the uh, part of the reason that, that they have both. But the actual year it came, I don't know. We also have that, which is cross, uh, 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 Bastone or Paradox. And so we do sell that as well. Some of these aisles, my camera's not. We call this the wood barn, by the way, because as you can see, it's an old barn. Yep. Um, or it's made to look like an old barn. It's actually my dad built it, so it's not very old. Um, I mean, it's not like ancient. It's not as old as it looks, but he built it all out of urban salvage and reclaimed, mostly reclaimed wood, a lot of wood that had actually gone through a fire. And um, same with his house. We've got a 4,500 square foot house uh, that also was built. He, he did it. He did, didn't have the money to finish it, but wanted a really big house, and so he just did it all reclaimed because it, at the time was cheaper. <laughs> so he has uh, the old Yolo Causeway. He's got wood from that. Um, lots of really cool camphor burls up there drying. Cottonwood. That's a wood that everybody throws away. Um, this is our. For some reason, our lights aren't on in here because we just opened. They didn't want to walk past me to while I was videoing, I think, to turn on all the lights because it is just around 8 o'clock out here, I think. So, so how, how, how big is your crew? Uh, we have a staff of I can't hear you. Band saws can't really see that stuff. Now that, that um, so, okay. so this is the wood miser blades all through here, and then more wood miser parts over in this room or this area. More wood miser blades. So you're wondering if we stock blades? We stock a few. So these are here. Um, more blades, wine barrels. This is Woodmiser's new slab miser out here. Uh, those blades right there are sharpened blades that are getting ready to go out. Um, are, those are going to another urban wood producer uh, on, on the coast, and they're running those on, on their WM1000 sawmill. Can we, can we take a closer look at that slab mill you were just at? I'm going to just a second. <laughs> uh, this is our blades room. This is our saw filer. Alex, say hi, Alex. Hello. What's up, Alex? So, he said, what's up, Alex? <laughs> <laughs> so he is how, in how here getting ready to sharpen all the blades for California. So How many, how oh. many different sharpeners do you have? Um, we have uh, two set up right now. We have Woodmiser's BMS 500, and then we also have um, we also have this one here, which is not a sellable Woodmiser item. We have that one because we are Woodmiser, so that one's a little bit different, a little more industrial. And then we have one setter. We are probably within the next um, probably within the next. I would say uh, 30 days, going to add another sharpener to that room, and that setter should be able to keep up. We might have to add another setter. So, That loader was on that redwood job that I was telling you about. Um, 
So yeah. that loader did a lot of the work. Let's get over here. Is there two right? Are you able to see that okay? Are you able to see that okay? Yep, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's so bright out here. I can't see what you can see. I can't see my screen. So so yell at me if I need yep, to change yeah, the change the look. This is our yeah, WM1000 here. What's that? Is that a roof ball? Is it a what? A root ball. Oh, a root ball. Gotcha. It is. It is. It is. This is olive. So that is going to be a super, super cool piece. Oh, sure you drop it on video, Tyler. What do you, what do you get olive wood from? Where do we get it? We got it from a local orchard. Um, uh, uh, another partner of ours uh, was able to salvage it from a local orchard. So, so this is a deck um, that we have. A lot of people ask how we mill the smaller logs because that olive's not really big. Um, and they ask how we mill the smaller logs like that on the 1000 because if you take a look up here, the blade is that's lowered all the way down and that's where the blade is so it's just not it doesn't reach down that far um but we use this deck right here and so that it, that deck is what we to mill the smaller lot we also throw stuff up here too before we uh before we get on the uh, on the slab binder because it gets it just a little more flat so over here we have there's some older planer and the, this guy here is an HR 150 resaw. See some of our dimensional back there. I'm afraid to get too far away. I don't know how my reception will be, but we can kind of walk through that. We will um, say hi, Elijah. Hi, Elijah. <laughs> What's up, Elijah? <laughs> <laughs> so that's my, um, a lot. there is, so Elijah is my brother that passed away last year's daughter's fiance. So um, another fam, another family generational thing there. Uh, so the that, yeah, that, that uh, giant sequoia redwood that I was telling you about, the smallest one. That's this guy right here. And uh, we put, we stood the, the butt log of it up. Um, it is uh, almost 14 foot in diameter at the base. So okay. if I had one of the guys standing next to it, we could uh, we could see it a little better. We'll lose reception out there, but there's a kiln out there. More uh, little cabin we built out of uh, pine. It's boarded up right now, but we take that to fairs and put an awning on it. So lots of cool things there. How do you cut that so, 14 foot log? What's that? How do you cut that 14 foot log? Do you break it down? Or you got like a big chainsaw? Uh, my dad did 090 seal with a nine foot bar. That's why he was laying down on that log or on that slab. That was from 2011 when he salvaged that. He was laying down on that slab because he'd been carrying around an 090 seal with a nine foot bar, which the, the biggest log, the biggest log the diameter. Let's go meet showing. Dad, come say. Uh, sure this up. is my dad, Jim. He he can't hear you, so we'll walk away from the loader so he can hear. Come on, Dad, let's go for a walk. So these are some sawmills that we have in for repair. I was telling you, uh, Alex, our mechanic, does services. So we've got Braywood Designs, little LT15 wide here for service. Lots of logs. Here's some of the. A uh, giant sequoia redwood that he has uh, he has milled up. Uh, these uh, s these this log he milled up for. They went into arches in a local uh, home here, and they were 36 inch wide arches. Those pictures are on our face or our Facebook and Instagram page as well. Six foot wide. Six foot wide. Why did I say 36? Sorry, <laughs> he corrected me. So. 
Anyway, my mama taught me not to talk to strangers, so let's introduce her. <laughs> okay, so you're going to look at him. Howdy, so sir. this is Robert. Hi, Robert. He can't Hi, look at you at the same time you're looking at him the way actually he can. We can make it go like this. Yeah. Yeah. There it's we go. It's a, to, it's a pleasure to meet you. <laughs> pleasure to meet you, sir. So he's the reason I'm still bossy. Now you know. <laughs> So this, this is our family business. Um, like I said, that's my grandson. We've got um, other logs coming in. We might be able to walk out um, uh, to the logs. Was there anything else you wanted to see or anything you wanted to hear from him about how he stood that log up? Whatever he wants to say. Yeah, absolutely. Whatever he wants to say, he'll be here all year. <laughs> So, way down there. How old, how old is he? How old is he? He's he's 29. Yeah. 28. She got me off one day. Yeah. <laughs> no, he is. Uh, uh, my first big project is I got to help build the ark. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's yeah. pretty cool. It's pretty amazing that you all working together. Yeah, she keeps us in line. We keep each other in line. <laughs> We it's both good. have a special tool that we can walk on on each other to straighten us out. Yep. <laughs> we got a big deck of redwood down yep. there. So, well, I, I'll lose reception if we go that far. So hold on just a second. We'll probably head back over here and see. Uh, do you want to see them mill the 1,000? So my son, down that path, uh, we've got five acres of logs and milled lumber. Probably closer to five acres of milled lumber. Yeah, I want to see whatever you want to show me. Okay. Well, we're going to come over here, and we are going to – I don't have too much time left. We've got a, we've That's got fine. somebody coming in for a training on an LT50 over here. I guess we could probably film while that's happening, but – No, whatever you need to do is fine. Whatever you need to go okay. is completely fine. I appreciate your okay. time. Yeah, of course. So we've got um, some of our dimensional over here. Way back there, you can way in the back back. You can see our faded LT40. It's got the cat diesel on it. This is an LX450. That one is new and sold. This LT50 right here is going out today, going to its new home. So Tyler will be training on that. You probably way in the back hear my son milling on our LT70 DTS. There's the new LX250. Wow. That's the barn timbers. So that's probably the only range that I have as far as uh, as far as how far our internet will work, or it just drops you like a hot potato. Yeah, so, that's fine. So yeah. So what they're doing here is they are uh, figuring out how they want this olive here, trying to get some of the rocks out of it. Um, if anybody's interested, Dad could probably talk about his museum in there and different ways that he used that that uh, the old saws. Or we could um, they, they're going to be a while before this is ready to mill. So that's fine. Yeah. So they're trying to figure out how to get it how how to get the most money out of it exactly. So yeah. So that's all day. that's. All day. Yep, that's the project today. So we put our yeah, little our logo here. A, a lot of people don't know that you don't just throw a log on a mill and cut it. You have to read it. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. It's not it's not that easy. So. <laughs> All right. So, anyways, we'll walk in here because they're going to be a long time. Yeah, walk back fine. in here and yeah. So that is pretty much the tour without uh, without uh, having a hot spot or some other internet to, to get us out there. That's pretty much uh, what you're going to be able to see from here. Yeah. Th thank you. Thank you for your time, for everything. We, I yeah, really of course. Appreciate it. Yeah, of course. All right. Well, you have a great day, and thank you for the opportunity. You too. Thank you very much. Uh, thank wait, you. Bye-bye. And, and post some pictures of that being milk. Oh, yes. Yes, for sure. We will. Stay, stay tuned for that. Right. Oh, I was going to tell you one more thing. If yes. anybody is interested, 
we are doing um, because of COVID. It's it's a little tougher to to do any um, uh, of our open houses that we do where there's you know hundreds of people who come in to buy to buy product. So we are doing Wild Walnut Wednesday first uh, first Wednesday in August, and so Alyssa will be posting a bunch of stuff about that and getting a little more going on uh, going online. So stay tuned on Instagram and Facebook for Wild Walnut Wednesdays. That'll be online. Beautiful. All right. All right. We'll see Have you a good day. Have a great day. All right. See you then. Bye. Bye. Bye.